All right, really good uh, to see everyone tonight. Uh, we continue to, uh, to do our best as a congregation to grow stronger, um, to spend time in God's word, to pray together, to uh, just be together the, the best we can. Uh, these are certainly, um, they're tough circumstances and it's lasting longer than I, I think any of us could have ever anticipated. Um, but I, I have to tell you, and I have shared this with some of you, the feedback um, that I've gotten from so many of you that in this time, that this has been a time of growth for you. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful um, that we as God's people are growing stronger. Um, certainly these tests are revealing hopefully things uh, about us, even things that maybe we need to change, some weaknesses. I, I know that, that, that I've, had some experience with that with this and um, certainly I think we have been reminded at the very least that possibly the the world that that we have lived in for for, for some time now possibly not as stable um, as maybe we once thought and you know that's a good reminder for us because this world is not our home and while we are citizens of this great country our ultimate citizenship is in the kingdom internal kingdom that, that will never um, be destroyed. So I, I hope you're growing. I hope you're spending time in God's word. I hope you're diligent in prayer. Um, I hope you're using as many opportunities as possible to encourage um, one another. And I know so many good things are happening right now. We have to be patient. We have to keep loving one another. Um, and as I've said before, it, I'm so proud to be um, a member of this local group, and you have made me stronger through your faith through all of this, and I just want you to know how much I love you and how much I appreciate you. Um, I wanted to share something with you as we get started just on a personal um, note tonight. Uh, kind of been a rough week for, for our family. Kylie's brother, some of you have met him, um, they visited with us at Kenwood before. Tyler's a few years um, younger than me. I, I guess it's been about a year ago um, he had a spot come up on his skin, um, and it ended up being the melanoma form of cancer. Um, they went in and was able to get all of it. Um, about six months ago, he developed a lump under his um, arm, and originally the doctors didn't see any cause for concern, but the lump continued to grow. And this week they biopsied it, and it came back um, as having melanoma um, in his lymph node. Um, which if anybody's familiar with that type of cancer, um, it's just a terrible um, form of cancer to get. And so today um, he went to get a scan to see if the cancer had spread. And um, we didn't expect to get results back so fast, but praise be to God, um, it has not spread. Um, they checked every part of his body except his brain. They're going to check his brain um, tomorrow and to see if it's spread there. Um, he will have to do some type of therapy moving forward, um, fairly aggressive, uh, I assume, but Tyler is, is a faithful child of God. They worship at the Avon congregation in Indianapolis. He's got three little girls, a wonderful wife. Um, they're just absolutely wonderful Christian people. And um, as I said, for Kylie and the, and the family, it's just been really a taxing um, couple of days. And so I would just ask you, um, to pray for that family. His name's Tyler Croft. Um, it's Kylie's brother. Um, in the coming days, I'm going to give you his address um, so you can maybe send him a card uh, just let him know that we're thinking about him, let him know that we're praying for him. And um, um, like I said, I, I know that you guys will be diligent in prayer and, and I know how much the family um, would appreciate that as well. Uh, we have a number uh, of our family members who are going through a whole lot with family members and various things of that nature. So let's be mindful of each other. Let's be mindful of our shut-ins. Um, and let's just be a congregation that is just completely dedicated to prayer, understanding that we have a God who has the power to answer our prayers, to answer them in his will, which is always for the best. But we also, as the Bible reminds us often, that he, he cares desperately for us. And what a great blessing that is. So I, I wanted to bring that to your attention because I know that you'd want to know that. And um, please pray on behalf of, of the family. Again, his name is Tyler Croft. And as soon as I know something, I'll, be, I'll give you updates um, as far as what we learned and uh, kind of the situation 
um, moving forward. But so good uh, to see everyone tonight. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to have one of our deacons, Brother Stephen Feldman. He's going to lead us in our opening prayer. Uh, Brother Bruce Hart, another one of our deacons, he's going to lead us in our songs tonight. Um, Brother Mark Pfeiffer, another one of our deacons, is going to um, extend our, our message tonight. Um, and then at the end of our service tonight, uh, Brother Kevin Jones is going to lead us um, in our closing prayer. And as always, I appreciate so much the men being willing to lead us in these things. It's, a, it's kind of an awkward thing, um, but... Um, I, don't, I don't guess anyone other than somebody who maybe wasn't feeling good or whatever, and nobody has ever declined um, an opportunity to, to help us in this, and, and what a blessing that is as well. But before we in, begin in, in doing some of these things, in, in an effort to help clear our minds, um, I, I'd like to read um, from Psalm 117, a short psalm, and we'll get into the beginning of Psalm 118 to help prepare our minds. And then Brother Stephen, if you would, when I'm finished, unmute yourself and lead us in that first prayer, please. The 117th Psalm, please. Psalm 117. Stanza one says, praise the Lord, all nations. Laud him, all peoples. For his loving kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord is everlasting. Praise the Lord. Psalm 18, stanza one, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let Israel say his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let the house of Aaron say his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let those who fear the Lord say his loving kindness is everlasting. From my distress, I called upon the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I will look with satisfaction on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for this uh, other opportunity we have this week to uh, gather with our brothers and sisters to worship you, to sing praises towards you, to be able to Take our minds away from worldly things, just focus on you and things above. Thank you for the health that you have blessed us with during this pandemic, and please continue to bless us with good health and help us to get over any sickness that we may have and to continue to be able to get out and to talk to others about you and bring glory and praise to your name in everything we do. Please continue to be with the Croft family and comfort them during this time and help the Tests that will be upcoming uh, result in good news, and thank you for the good news towards Tyler and his health uh, in the recent tests he's had. Be with us, Lord, and everything we do, let us always be a shine light in this world and talk to others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first song will be number 280, Give Me the Bible. Number two eight zero. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that radiant, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. When sin and grief have filled my soul with fear, give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up a lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Pre 
precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten, teach me the danger of these realms below that lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten that light along the path of peace can show give me the bible holy message shining thy light shall guide me in the narrow way precept and promise law and love combining till night shall vanish in eternal day give me the bible lamp of life immortal hold up that splendor by the open grave show me the light from heaven shining portal show me the glory gilding jordan's wave give me the bible holy message shining thy light shall guide me in the narrow way precept and promise law and love combining till night shall vanish in eternal day our next song for our lesson <clears throat> but number 159 my jesus i love thee 159 <clears throat> my jesus i love thee i know thou art mine for thee all the follies of sin i resign my gracious redeemer my savior art thou if ever i love thee my jesus tis now I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow if ever i love thee my jesus is now i'll love thee in life i will love thee in death and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath and say when the death do lies hold on my brow if ever i love thee my jesus tis now in mansions of glory and in lusty light i'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright i'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow if ever i love thee my 
Jesus tis now. It's good to see everybody out tonight. I have a few short words here. Won't take up too much of your time. I've titled this A Gift. The dictionary defines a gift as something voluntarily transferred by one person to another person without regard to compensation. As the definition states, a gift requires two individuals, the giver of the gift and the recipient of the gift. Take a moment tonight to look at these two individuals. First, let's consider the giver of the gift and examine their thought processes. To start, somehow or another you've merited favor in their sight and they have noted something about you and decided to present you with something to show their appreciation of you. And it's chosen you specifically. Secondly, the giver has chosen the gift very carefully and has personalized it to fit you. They've not just selected some random object. A gift is something that the giver will give to bring joy to the receiver. And lastly, the giver has no regrets over the cost of the gift. It's freely given. If you haven't made the connection yet, the gift giver I'm speaking of is God the Father. And he's considered us worthy to receive a gift. And that gift is his son who through his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross has given us a gift of eternal life with him in heaven. We can read in Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15, thanks be to God for his incredible gift. Now let's take a look at the receiver of the gift. The person who receives the gift has two choices. He can accept the gift and appreciate it, appreciate the giver and the gift itself and accept it, or he can totally disregard it and throw it to the side. Now, how would you think the person who gave the gift would feel knowing that all of that thought and effort and expense was totally put in the trash. And that's exactly what we do when we reject Jesus and his great sacrifice for us and the Father for giving that gift. We've pretty much told the Father and the Son both that we have no regard for what they've given us. Of course, the end result of a rejection of God's gift cannot end well. We see several Old Testament examples of when the Israelites disobeyed God. In Hosea 4, verse 6, God states, Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest, because you have ignored the law of your God. And I will also ignore your children. And in Hosea chapter 9, verse 17, my God will reject them because they have not obeyed him. They will be wanderers among the nations. We need to be ever grateful of all of the gifts that we receive from God daily. And let us never be ones to regret such great things. If there's a problem in your life, I urge you definitely to seek God in prayer. If it's of a private nature, if it's of a public nature, Please get with one of us and we will help you through it. And by all means, if you have not yet become a Christian, make that decision as well tonight. Turn back over to Justin. Our last song will be number 337. Number 337. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship 
of that good man's is like to that of the before our Father's throne. We pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our want, our comforts, and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Really appreciate, again, all the men um, leading us tonight. Appreciate Brother Stephen and his thoughtful prayer. Appreciate Bruce uh, leading us in, in these songs. I would encourage you um, to go back and even reflect upon the words that, that we have sung tonight and really appreciate Brother Mark Pfeiffer. Um, I, I, I can think of, uh, of nothing better than for us to be reminded of the great gift that was given each one of us and the challenge um, to accept it on his terms and to not throw it away. Um, I, I remember when we first came to Kenwood, uh, Brother Mark gave the invitation. And, uh, I think the men would back me up on this. Uh, giving an invitation is really a difficult thing to do, to, to be concise, but to give your point across. And Brother Mark has a unique uh, ability to accomplish those couple of things. And he's a wonderful writer. And uh, we just appreciate him and, and all that, that he does. Um, for us at Kenwood. We are blessed at Kenwood with a lot of talent, but we're also blessed. Um, our deacons uh, do, do so much behind the scenes that they just, it just goes unnoticed, and it's not always in the forefront of things, but it, it just happens, and um, we enjoy uh, the result of it, but we don't often see it, it, it being done. So um, look in your directory. Um, I, I would try to list the men who serve as deacons for us, but, but I would forget someone, and um, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but look in your directory and, and see who the deacons are and, and send them a note of thanks or a text of thanks, just thanking them for the things that, that they do for us um, that often go unnoticed. We really appreciate all the men assisting us tonight. Be making plans to, to be, um, for us to be together on Sunday morning at, at 930, Lord willing. Um, it looks like there's no rain, but it's going to be a little warm. Uh, so if you need to bring an umbrella or Whatever you need to do, um, let's just be thankful that God continues to, to bless us with, with an avenue to come and to worship him. And, and every single member has the ability to come in, in some capacity. If they decide to stay in their car, that's okay. Um, but, but what a blessing that is that God is blessing us with. And let's not lose sight of that in the midst of this pandemic. Um, let's continue to be prayerful. Um, let's be there uh, for one another. Let's continue to grow. Let, let this be a time of growth. Um, I know some of you do your own thing by way of your daily Bible study. Continue in that. Um, for those of us who are, are doing it together, um, we'll be in Jonah chapter 3 tomorrow. Uh, there will be a video uh, to accompany that in, in the morning. Um, this coming Sunday, there will be another discipleship class. Um, like I said, if you're doing your own thing, keep doing it. Just stay in God's Word no matter what. Just stay in God's Word. Let's pray. Well, as we sing with the kids, read your Bible. Pray every day, and as the kids will tell you, you'll grow, grow, grow. That's a simple formula, um, but man, if we would just do it and commit to that, we certainly will grow. Uh, it's good to see Howard and Nancy able to join us from Colorado, which is pretty cool. Uh, I know they were even able to, to join in our service um, on Sunday morning with us, and so we're, we're thankful for that they've had a safe trip, and hopefully they'll be safe. Uh, we'll be praying for their safe return coming back. Um, this time of year lends itself to a lot of people traveling, so let's be mindful of all of those. Um, the Weedman family, um, 
continue to pray for, for, for Betty and her mother and all the various things that's um, going on in, in her family. Um, let's be thinking about them and reach out to them and, and make sure they've got everything that they need. But again, so good uh, to see you tonight. And thank you again for just being willing to try and being the people you are. And um, we just love every single one of you. So invite others to come and be with us on Sunday morning. Um, we've had visitors, I think every time we've done this, um, but continue to invite people. So with nothing else, um, as far as I know that needs to be said, uh, we'll be led in our closing prayer uh, by Brother Kevin Jones. Good to see everybody tonight. Let's pray together. Merciful God, Father in heaven, we bow before you at this time. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you give us. We're thankful for this day, the opportunity we've had to join together in worship of you, sing songs to you, to praise you, to study your word. We're thankful, Lord, for the many opportunities that you give us today to be able to join together to worship and praise you. We recognize that it is your name is the most high and holy there is, and you are the one that is worthy of all of our praise. Thank you, Lord, for <clears throat> the country we live in, the freedom we have that we're able to assemble together and worship and praise you and, and do so freely. Pray that you would be with the leaders of our country as we continue to go through trying and unprecedented times. Be with the leaders as they have been appointed to do the work that they have, that they may seek you, knowing and understanding the truth that you provide for them and the great tasks that they have. Pray, Lord, that you'd be with the ones that we know of that are sick and struggling. Pray you'd be with our loved ones that continue to have health struggles. Pray, Lord, you'd be with us, knowing that when our loved ones are sick, the agony that it brings us, pray that you would please provide your comforting hand and your healing hand to the ones that need it most. Pray, Lord, that you would help us to recognize the situation that our lives are in. We separate ourselves from you, knowing what it would bring to, our, our, bring to us, the destruction. Pray that you forgive us of our sins and as we repent of them. Pray, Lord, that you'll be with us as individuals and as a church, as society today, it seems that division is being encouraged. We want, need to understand and recognize that while it is that we may think that we have struggles with one another, we need to recognize that they're simply tricks of a very worthy advocate who would like to divide us. We need to remember your word and the teaching that's in it, knowing the unity that you provide for us if we'll only obey you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Oh, you'll have to unmute yourself to be heard. Bye, Harley. Bye, sweetheart. I like your crayon. Yeah. You're welcome. Hi, Ellie Sue. Charlotte. Hi, baby girl. Hey, Ellie.